In my interview with Dennis Kelly, the playwright described Leah as the moral beating heart of the play. In today's video, we'll take a look at this key character. The audience first meets Leah in Act 1, Scene 2, in the field with Phil. In a format which we will see again, Leah speaks to Phil, but he does not reply. She asks him questions, but then doubts herself. Are you happy? No, don't answer that. Jesus, sorry, what's wrong with me? Sorry. In this opening exchange, Leah seems insecure and desperate for Phil's attention. It soon becomes clear that Phil has power over Leah, power exerted through a silence which keeps her clamouring for his attention. Kelly also initially presents Leah as loyal to the group. In Act 1, Scene 3, she says, We haven't done anything, but if we have, then we did it together. Leah is not guilty of the crime, but her loyalty to the group sees her willing to take on the shared responsibility for what has happened to Adam. Through her desperation for Phil's attention and her willingness to be held responsible for the group's actions, Leah appears to be just another follower, like Brian and Adam. However, things change as the play progresses. In the one-way conversation set in the field, Leah also delivers some of the longer speeches of the play, which are essentially monologues. These reveal Leah to be inquisitive, intelligent and philosophical. In the Act 2, Scene 2 monologue, Leah questions the notion of happiness. Her references to nuclear waste, global warming and carbon dioxide indicate her intelligence. Later, she'll speak about evolution in the same way. Perhaps the most significant speech in the entire play, the Bonobos monologue in Act 1, contains much to analyse. Leah says, Apparently bonobos are our nearest relative. This monologue is one of a number of references to evolution. In 1859, Charles Darwin published his work on the origin of species, in which he detailed his theory of biological evolution. In The Descent of Man, Darwin suggested that apes and humans may have a common ancestor. The question raised here is, if people had evolved from animals, was it possible to devolve back into an animalistic state? Was there always an animal within us? And Kelly taps into this idea in DNA with the animal imagery and references, including Leah's monologue about bonobos and chimps in this scene. In the same speech, Leah references DNA, which is of course the play's title. The topic of DNA also highlights how Kelly explores the savagery within humanity. DNA is the building material of humans and most living organisms. Now in one way, DNA plays a part in the play because of how it's planted on the postman and is used in the criminal investigation. But there is a second significance to the title in what has often been called the nature-nurture debate. Kelly's play questions whether people act the way they do because they learn that behaviour from others, or whether they do it because it is programmed into their DNA, again from their animal ancestry. Leah's speech can be seen as foreshadowing later events in the play. She explains, A chimp will just find itself on the outside of a group and before he knows what's happening he's being howled into death by the others. This, of course, is what happened to Adam. Adam was sort of hanging around on the outside of the group, desperate to be accepted, and was hounded to death by the others. There's more foreshadowing when Leah says, If a bonobo damages its hand, the chimp will probably cast it out or bite its hand off. And this is essentially what happens to Adam in Act 3. He's found injured and is cast out, murdered. Kelly then uses Leah's long speeches to explore some of the key themes of the play and to draw a strong parallel between the group and the animal kingdom. In a play which explores the root cause of human savagery, it is Leah's speech which gives the clearest answer. Having evolved from animals, the group have animalistic savagery in their DNA. This is further alluded to in Act 2 when Leah tells Phil about her déjà vu, saying, Do you think we're doomed to behave like people before us did? The idea that people behave in the same way time and time again across history seems to be reinforced through Kelly's use of structure. Each part of the play begins in the street, moves to the field, and then, in Acts 1-3, to the wood and the field again. The settings are cyclical, and so, Leah's question suggests, is human behaviour. There's a sense that Leah understands the savagery in the play is the same savagery that's taken place time and time again in human history, because it is embedded into human DNA. And Leah is not beyond this savagery herself. In Act 2, Scene 2, her intelligent speech is juxtaposed with the next thing that happens, where Leah reveals she killed her pet with a screwdriver. This seems out of character for Leah, but perhaps she's trying to impress Phil in a way that she feels will meet his approval. In Act 2, Scene 3, Leah and Phil find out that someone matching the postman's description has been arrested. Leah continually asks Phil for his input and advice. Phil, any... any thoughts? No, we're not, are we, Phil? Isn't that right, Phil? 
Just like the rest of the group, Leah doesn't know what to do and is dependent upon Phil to come up with the answers. Crucially though, Leah changes by the end of the play. She stands up to Phil when he decides Adam should be murdered in Act 3, telling him, no, no, wait, you can't. Phil ignores her. In the next scene, once again set in the field with just Phil and Leah, it is now Leah who is silent. Leah storms off and Phil is left calling after her. Clearly this scene is a direct contrast to the previous scene set in the field. Now it is Leah who is silent and Phil who speaks, and this change indicates how Leah has changed as a person. Again, in my interview with Dennis Kelly, the playwright referenced Leah's question, do you think we're doomed to behave like people before us did? Kelly explained, I think Leah is proof that we're not, because she doesn't repeat. She breaks the cycle. At the end of the play, she goes, and I find that very hopeful. I find that very hopeful that Leah is this kind of moral beating heart of the play, but in the end, she knows that they've gone somewhere terrible, and so she can't be part of that. Leah leaves not only Phil, but the entire group and school. Mark explains in the following scene that she has moved schools, and when reminded of her keenness to be involved with the group in Act 1, it's an indication of how much Leah has changed from the start of the play. If you found this video useful, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel.